Hi, this is Sherry. I'm coming at you from Canyon Lake and I'm in my a new canoe today. She's called the Ruby Slipper. Ruby for short. Thanks for Bill Klaus Meyer's idea. I like that. Um, today, I'm going to speak to you first about an, there are an animal totem that came up. And before I do that, I'm going to tell you a situation. Um, and you'll understand it when I um, give us the animal totem messages. So I'm going to have you guys just kind of look. I'm, I'm going to let us float and just go wherever we're, we're going to go. Um, before I do that, I mean, we've got like, look at all the, we've just got so many cool water birds right now. We've got all of these birds here. I'm not quite sure what they are. They're super neat. I've not seen them before. And then we've got, as before, the great white herons. Right on, baby. And we've got a ton of them over here. So when we go cruising around, you're going to see them up closer. Um, but I'm going to tell you what's going on first of all. Okay, do you know what passive aggressive behavior is? You've got aggressive behavior, right? This is somebody who wants to control a situation. This is somebody who's very aggressive, um, combative, um, nasty. Uh, but control is the whole issue with a pass with with a with a, an aggressive person as well as a passive aggressive. Now, a passive aggressive personality, they tend to show themselves as more on the outset. They seem to look like they're very easygoing, um, you know, wanting to please people, but what they do is they allow that to be seen on the outside and then they come at it from the back way this passive aggressive behavior the whole the whole purpose of their behavior is as well to control everybody wants to control so we need to strike a balance between passive aggressive behavior and and um, aggressive behavior where's your balance between this that's going on okay so what's been going on is i've been having this drawn into my life for the last while i've got several instances of this passive aggressive controlling behavior Ooh, there they go and you know as as anytime anything's brought into my life uh, if, if there's a difficulty I ask myself what am I supposed to be learning from this first of all you say to yourself why does this keep coming into my life why am I drawing this to me and it doesn't necessarily mean um, that you've drawn it to you like through the law of attraction but the law of attraction does bring it to you for either lessons or a mirror so that you can see something happening in your own life so you can learn your own lessons so in this instance um, there was a situation in, in the home where I live and the person was behaving in a um, there were certain things that needed to be done and they weren't they weren't being done as they were supposed to he, they were taking advantage of situations and so I confronted the individual and I did it in a very you know um, respectful manner I did it in a manner of um, I, I spoke reasonably uh, with a reasonable tone of voice and just said hey you know this is what's going on are you gonna are you gonna take care of this and the answer was oh yeah 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 so this goes on for several weeks and it's not taken care of and constantly we're constantly saying you know going back and saying look are you gonna take care of the situation yeah yeah I'm gonna take care of it so it doesn't happen so several weeks go by and it's getting to the point where this person is not understanding English is not understanding um, you know reasonable conversation they're just they're not doing what they're supposed to do so I go over the over their heads I go to the landlord and I said look this needs to be taken care of it's not being taken care of we've asked many many times reasonably and it's not taken care of so he's a, she's assured that yes this is gonna take be taken care of well and another week goes by and still it's not being taken care of and it's getting really really frustrating because it's actually affecting everybody else in the house especially me um, and so I'm getting annoyed and I can do one of two things I can blow a gasket and lose my cool and completely they have the situation blow out of control and I know I don't want to do this but it's affecting my energy and I don't like that either so I'm like you know the person comes into the house kind of sneaks by me and I said excuse me are you gonna take care of that and they got really upset slammed the door or whatever so five more days go by we're talking weeks here right and finally in the middle of the night the person does what they're supposed to do middle of the night so that nobody has to, doesn't have to do it in front of anyone I guess and then proceeds to call the landlord and say, um, I did what I was told. And landlord texts me and says, oh, he said he did what he was supposed to do several days ago. And I said, no, he didn't. He did it last night, but whatever. Let's just let it, let it be, right? So in order to get back at us for his um, having to do something that he didn't want to do, um, he starts to exhibit all of this passive aggressive behavior. He starts making really, really loud noise in the middle of the night, um, just constantly doing this passive aggressive behavior. So how do we deal with this? I said, let's vibrate the 
the frequency. I was talking to the other other persons that were living in the home, and I said, let's just vibrate our frequency higher and vibrate his out, the negativity out. So we put a put an effect that we weren't going to give this any more energy. And spirit kept saying to me, don't give any more energy to this situation; it'll just grow. So we let this go. So now I'm going to bring it to this. See my canoe? The other day. I got a text message in the morning from my neighbor that that whose dock that I use, right? And I borrow a canoe from a friend that sits sit, it's been sitting there for years and not been used. And he says, "Hey, there's a there's a canoe for sale at a garage sale and it's $95." And I'm like, "Wow. I mean, even, you know, second hand, $350 is as cheap as we've been able to find it." But I've been getting messages from spirit to lighten your load, simplify, um, be ready to move because, and I kept getting new home because it feels like things are going to be moving forward for me and I'm not quite sure what that means. So I kind of hesitated and I thought, oh, I don't know. And I said, I could use, I'll just use the one that's there. And he says, yeah, but what happens if she sells it? And I thought that's true. You know, that one day when the canoe was gone, it, it made it difficult for when I do the readings because I like to come out here and do the readings. I know these people are wondering why I'm doing this. Um, so. I thought, I thought about it for a few minutes and I, and I asked online, I asked you guys and everyone says like, go for it. So we went over there and I get the canoe. So now we have to figure out how to bring the canoe back to the house. And he's coming up with these, all of these, you know, really complicated um, ways of getting this and getting it down to the water. And basically he's going to go a lot out of his way to do it for me. And I'm saying like, no, no, it's okay. I don't want to. We'll do this as simple as we can. Um, it's been very clear to me I'm not stupid um, and spirit has also said to me you know you're 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 having things done for you but it's not um, without strings attached there is a, an ulterior motive and as long as both people aren't being hurt and um, you're very careful not to hurt the other's feelings you know just be aware of the situation so I understand and I'm very very straightforward and and very careful you know I, I kind of keep it just very very to the basics, I use the canoe, um, I don't really go over there much, and we just kind of keep it on a friendly basis. Person's very nice, offers to do a lot of things for me, and um, I, don't take, I don't take advantage of them, I don't do them. Uh, I take as little as I can from, um, from all that's offered to me, because I don't wanna, um, I don't like to be hold in, to anybody, and I don't want to uh, get the wrong idea, right? So I'm very, very straightforward, there's nothing happening here. So, anyway, so here we are, and, uh, Last night, uh, you know, I'm trying to figure out what do I call this baby? And, you know, I said it's red. I love the fact that it's red. My friend said um, the ruby slipper. And I thought, how perfect, you know? It's giving me a, a way home. It gives me a way to where I need to go, just like Dorothy's slippers. And then I started thinking about it and I thought, Dorothy had her slippers. They, they showed her how to get home, but I'm not sure if she was to keep them. I think she was lent them. So, anyway, late, late last night I get this text message, um, and, and the fellow had asked me to come over and with my girlfriend that has moved in upstairs, and he's kind of like got something else in mind, and we don't do it. And so he gets upset, and he says to me, okay, this is what's going to happen. I'm going to go over and I'm going to pay for the canoe, because I already paid him cash. I gave him, you know, $100 cash, and... Uh, because I'm going to go pick it up and we're going to do it this way, this way, this way. And it, it was very complicated. And I said, um, well, I said, you know, I have to do my reading tomorrow. You know that. He wanted me to go out on the boat with my girlfriend. And I said, no, thank you. But I do my reading. And I, I really don't go any pri anywhere separately and privately with him anyway. And uh, so he got annoyed. And so he says, well, this is what's going to happen. And he tells me this really complicated way of getting the canoe. And I said, look, you know, why don't I just come down? I'll get it. I'll go with you when, whenever you go just to, to make it as easy as possible for you. And I get this email back and he's cussing me out and he's, it, it, it was clear that there was other reasons that he was upset, but it was really bad. And I said, I sat there for a few minutes and I'm trying to figure out how to handle this situation. You know, I don't want to be combative, but I've got this, 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 this uh, passive aggressive and this aggressive controlling behavior coming at me. And so Spirit's bringing this to my attention and they're telling me, you know, and I asked and I did a reading and I asked and I was told, you know, you need to stand your ground. You need to set boundaries and you need to be respectful, but you need to not allow others to take over your ground and, and state your position. So I wrote back and I said, look, I'm not your child. Um, you're not my father. Um, I was very respectful, and this is, I, I was trying to do what, what, I, what I could do to make it as easy on you as possible. Um, and basically, I, I did this, you know, I, I was very polite um, in, in what I sent back to him, and that, it wasn't what he wanted. So he got very, very upset, and he sends back to me, look, this is what's going to happen. I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to take the canoe. I'll give you your, a check for $100. I'll put the canoe down on the, do the wharf, and you and your girlfriend can use it whenever you want. And done deal that's what's gonna happen and I said wow 
okay? And I'm thinking in my head, how do I handle this situation? I'm, I'm thinking, you know, everything happens for a reason. So if spirit wants this canoe to be in my possession, it will be. If there's a reason that they're taking it out of my possession, there must also be a reason for that. It's done in a really sneaky, underhanded way, but I was, I was trying to understand why it was happening. So I just said, I'm going to bed. And I said, have a good night. And he comes back with this really nasty thing. And I just, I let it go. And I get up this morning and he sends me a picture of my canoe that I've paid for. And he says, the canoe is in the water next to the other one. Um, I'll put a check in the car for you. Um, you guys can come and use it whenever you want. Um, enjoy. So it's kind of like I'm supposed to thank him for stealing my canoe um, <laughs> and be grateful for it. And I thought, all right. The universe is telling me that possibly I don't need to have this canoe. I don't need to be tied to something that I can't uh, carry on the top of my car, maybe. But I'm supposed to handle the situation. And then I started thinking about the messages that I was getting before. And you guys might have seen them on my page. And they were talking about, uh, one of the messages was learning how to win the battle, or win, allow somebody to feel that they've won the battle while winning the war yourself. Also, today I posted a, a, a post, um, and it was talking about um, allowing yourself, allowing um, yourself to not always have to be right. Um, like allowing the situation to pass where you don't have to be the one that's right. Um, and there, and there's, there may not, like I said, there may be reasons that we're not aware of at this time, but you don't always have to be right. So I thought, okay. So I'm trying to figure out how to handle this. So I come down and I look at this canoe and I'm thinking, damn, I like this. This is exactly what I wanted, and I'm bummed. But what happened was, he wants my person at his dock. He wants me to be beholding to him. He wants me to be having to go over there. That was his purpose the entire time. That's always been his purpose, is that he now has control of something that I want, and so I'm going to be coming and ha over to his place. So I thought, well, he's out on his boat today. He'll probably go by us as we're as we're, as we're doing our reading. And I thought, okay, I'm gonna take the canoe and I'm gonna come out here and I'm gonna use it and I'm gonna do my reading and um, I'm gonna let him think he's won his, his battle and I have not lost my cool. I'm still using the canoe. So I started thinking about Ruby, the ruby slippers. They were, she was given the ruby slippers, right? So that she could find her way home. So this is Ruby and I'm being given the ability to use this, this canoe, but perhaps it's gonna tie me down if I have it. I'm gonna let spirit figure that one out. I'm gonna leave it for right now. You will understand why I'm telling you this story about passive aggressive behavior and controlling behavior now when I talk to you about the totem. Now I'm gonna I'm gonna put you guys in between my knees as I do the totem. Woo! Sorry guys. As I do the um as I do our totem message because I can't do this. I'm going on somebody's dock here. Um, I've got to kind of get us off the dock. Shoot. Okay. Do you have anything to look at in this direction? Probably not a lot, hey? Oh, well. All right. What it is that we're going to be speaking about is, it's interesting because it's, how do I figure out, and I write this down because there's way too much information for me to, um, for me to tell you guys just by memory. So, yes, I have paper here, the paper here. So how do I get my totem message? I'm going to turn around because the sun's in my face. Um, how do I decide what it is that Spirit is wanting us to, to use? Well, this morning I'm getting ready and I'm, you know, going, I've done, picked out the cards that Spirit's given me and I'm cleaning up my room and I kept hearing this, this uh, commercial on the radio and it was for um, Boar Head Beer. Boar's Head Beer. And I thought, Boar's Head Beer? How many times do they have to talk about Boar's Head Beer? And then I realized it's the boar. So Wild Boar is our totem messenger. Okay, so you guys look around. Lord, is that him coming? I hope not. Okay, so Wild Boar. So boars are wild. They have few predators, and they do what they want, when they want. Kind of sounds like somebody who's pig-headed, right? Um, they, when, when they do run into conflict, they attack with ferocity, right? They jab, they've got those, they've got those tusks, and they, and they jab the tusks upward, right? And they're lethal. They attack with such ferocity, they go straight into their enemy's jugular, um, rendering them useless. Um, also, the boars, particularly the males, they're solitary creatures. And they are, because of this, they tend to be wanderers. You know, they wander around in the woods and they're rooting around in the woods. And they talk about the mothers, the mother boars. They have these supernatural powers. They have the ability, so, so it's like spirit is drawn to them. They have the supernatural ability to protect and defend the ones that they love. I'm gonna let you guys look around. It's very, very beautiful. Let's see if we can see any cool messengers. Um, 
And when, when they're talking, what they do is they speak about they have this ability to defend their loved ones and they love with, and, and we're not talking just, just the females, but the males and the female boars, they love with wild abandon, they, they, with passion. They're actually the symbols of virility and fertility and strength. They're actually a symbol um, that they used to use in the olden days. They would put them on a wedding bed, would be the symbol of the boar. That's what was on the wedding bed. Um, so because they, they love to, they love, they run and they play, everything they do, they do with high voltage. And you know, they, as, they, as I said, they're rooting around. And because they're rooting around in the forest, they tend to have the, the ability to uncover truths, uncover hidden things. Um, what is underneath the surface? So it's speaking to you about looking what is underneath the surface of what's going on. Um, they also are constantly being asked to stand up for themselves, set boundaries, um, and, and, and they're, they're asked to have faith and move forward without having fear. If there's something that isn't right, they're the ones who are asked to correct it. How funny is this? Because that's what spirit is having me do in these situations. It's like, why do I have to be put in this situation? You know, my roommate says to me, Sherry, it's interesting how these guys will do this with you and, and they'll, they'll, they'll kind of like confront you and they'll put you in a position where you have to def attack or defend and then they come after you. Like, you know, then they want something from you. <laughs> so it's clear that this is me that this is going on about. Um, so basically, they're, they're being asked to stand up for and have faith and move forward without any fear. So if something is, is not going right, they're supposed to correct it. That's, their, that's what they're asked to do. They're asked, so they're asking you also to fine tune your senses and pay attention to what's going on around you. What's going on around us right now? Some kind of a little, dang man, jeez. Oh, hi puppy, hi puppy pants. Oh, Labrador, dog. Love, unconditional love, loyalty, faithfulness, protection, friend. Hi, sweet baby. Oh, you guys. That's a wonderful totem. Hi, you're on candy camera. Hi, baby. I'm going to have to go away and do my reading, though. How sweet was that face? Oh, love. Love, love, love. Okay, so rooting around. Um, they wanting you to pay attention to your senses, see what's going on around you. So that was a message for us. That was a message on, on all of those, um, those, those uh, characteristics that I told you about. Love, unconditional love, loyalty, friendship, protection, friend. Um, so that's what was going on for us right there. They also embody power and victory and they, and they embody accomplishment. Um, they're telling you that fear cannot defeat you. That, you. that They're asking, okay, this isn't a very cool spot to look. Let's go this way. They're telling you not to allow fear to conquer you. They want you to conquer your fear. They want you to face it and let nothing stand in your way. Um, it might indicate that there's a domineering person or persons or a controlling person in your, in your midst. <laughs> like I told you. They're saying, face it. Don't allow these domineering, controlling people to control your life. Um, the native Indian tribes, they use the boar as an example of being brave and of being honest and finding your courage. They're the messengers uh, to be honest in all that you do. They're telling you that you've got the courage to face what might feel like an uncomfortable situation. Like clearly that wasn't fun for me, right? This was not a situation that was comfortable to, to confront. But they're telling you that you have to find the courage to confront this stuff that's going on. Um, they're telling you that complete truth is, is, is vital at this point. They're asking you, is there something that you have not been honest about? Is there... Um, is there something that you have been procrastinating? Is there some kind of fear or something or someone, a situation in your life, like a bleak situation perhaps, that's kept you an illusion of avoiding an unpleasantness that needs to be faced? They're telling you to stop lying um, if there is the, to yourself or to others. Face the ugly truth that's either within you or within this situation that you have to deal with, that you're neglecting to deal with. It's all about truth and integrity. They're talking about truth, you know, it, it's gonna come back and bore you like the boar's tusks if you don't tell. Um, if, you keep, if you keep these fallacies going forward, if, if, you're, if you're not gonna uncover the truth and, and stand in your integrity, they're saying be brave and courageous and release the burden because it's very burdensome to hold on to something, to an untruth, right? And release this burden and stop escaping reality. They're telling you you're gonna create an illness. So you literally will create a physical illness by holding on to something that you know that you need to let go of and that you need to speak up about. It'll literally make you sick to your stomach or physically ill in other ways um, if you keep continuing to do this. And they're saying they don't want you to allow yourself to um, be oh, to, to allow these fears or worries or, or whatever this is, the fear of fear itself, to take you over. 
They want you to actually take the fear, the energy of the fear, and allow it to propel you forward and, and use it as a way to face what your gut knows that you need to do. And basically what they're saying is if you have something that you have to face, if there is a situation in your life that's been really difficult for you, um, an ugly situation, um, an uncomfortable situation, something that you know is not right, um, that, that, that's causing you to, to be sick in your life or causing you to be upset or causing issues for you, um, use this courage, call upon Boar Medicine to help you have the courage to speak. And if there is something that you've allowed to go, um, a situation where, where and something's been misunderstood, if you allowed a misunderstanding to take place where the truth is, is being skirted, they're saying you need to call upon Boar Medicine at this time to speak up, speak your truth, and allow it to be clear. I'm going to put that away. Um, I'm going to put you guys between, that was it for Boar Medicine, but I thought that was in, totally intriguing, being that that was the one that Spirit asked us to speak about when here I've had, and they're talking about a um, pig-headed, um, controlling person that's affecting your life. And, and yet it, that's one half. That's, that's the aggressive half of boar. And then the, the other half, the balanced half of boar, was to face these ones. And the boar, the boar people are the ones who are actually meant to, to right these wrongs. So I thought that was intriguing because here, you know, on one hand, I have no problem facing a situation. I have no problem speaking up, but I don't want to unleash the aggressiveness that's inside of me because I do have that in me, and I don't want to do that. Oh, here's another total messenger. Look at all these snakes. Snakes are transformation, and they speak about healing. And they're, I mean, I know that they're on this dock to keep the birds away, but they're also a messenger for us. That There's a healing taking place and a transformation that's taking place. I love how spirit just drops all of these in, in my lap. Okay, I got us kind of out. Um, I'm going to get us out in the middle a little bit here so that I'm not in the way from all the boats, but so that we can kind of get a little nicer view of what's going on around here. I'd like you guys to see when the um, whooping grains take off over there. They're so beautiful. And the, the snowy egrets. God, I love them. Okay, so we have several cards, and I'm hoping we can get through all of this. Um, and how I'm going to do this is, oh, uh, here comes a boat. Hold on. I'm going to take us down here. It's so beautiful, you guys. I'm sure you don't mind just looking around as I go through. This boat's very different than the, um, this canoe is different than my other one that I was using. It's a lot lighter. Um, the other one is fiberglass and it's much heavier. This one is plastic, but it's not as solid. Like, it, like it's very tippy, this one. So, have, I have a tendency to kind of start tipping a little. All right, so what we're gonna be using is the Crystal Oracle. This is by Tony Carmine Salerno. He's one of my favorites, you guys know that. And the first message that we're gonna be speaking about is sodalite and here's the stone the crystal sodalite they're telling you to keep calm because <laughs> this is going to help you strengthen your determination to, to basically go after and pursue your dreams they're telling you to set a little time aside every day to meditate um, and and you know allow your heart to feel what it is that that it that it that's going on they want you to trust your intuition and by doing this you're going to you're going to have what's necessary to create what it is that your heart is wanting what it is that you're desiring and then at the same time, what they're talking to you about is letting go of any fixed um, expectations or time frames. They're saying that you know maybe your, your dreams that you're having are going to take a little while to manifest, but they are going to manifest. They're basically saying, you know, it's basically, it's, it's a positive confirmation that your dreams are going to come about, but not by you, um, you know, a lot of times we have a fixed expectation of how we think things are supposed to be. And spirit has a different idea um, of how things are supposed to be. And so sometimes they're going to come for us and come to us, but not in the way that we imagine. So they're saying step outside the box and just allow spirit to bring it to you the way that they want to bring it. So that's the first message. I'm going to see if I can turn this around because I'm going backwards. I'm going backwards. I'm, gl I'm glad that it's, um, it's peaceful out here today, though. Oh, it's love being here. Isn't this pretty, you guys? Look at the view you get. Ooh, very cool. Okay. The next message that we have coming forward is gold. Actually, it's not gold. It's called wolfenite, but it looks like gold. I think it's like fool's, fool's gold. Looks like there's a, 
an arrowhead at the top there. How interesting. I hope these are, I'm holding these right for you guys. So they're basically saying your powers of perception are very strong at this time. And you're going to have like a heightened awareness of others' thoughts and intuitively understand their motives. You're going to be able to pick it up. You know, you're going to get what's going on. Um, and you're being encouraged to follow your instincts and, and follow what you're getting. They want you to rely on what it is that you're getting rather than what other people say to you. You know, people can say one thing, but you know what? there's something actually going on underneath the situation. And they're saying, follow your gut. You're going to preserve the integrity of a project or a situation that, that is very important to you. So again, you're being encouraged not to listen to conflicting opinions of anyone else, but listen to the guidance that's coming from your own soul, because this is your own psychic ability that you have. How cool is this? I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to turn us around again, because we're backwards. So that's that message. Hold on. Sometimes you need to back up to get where you need to go forward. That's another message. It doesn't, often, sometimes we feel like we're, we're going backwards in a situation, but we're not. It's kind of like a spiral, you know, where we have to back up a little bit to move forward again, just like I did just now. I had to kind of like reposition myself. Um, that was another message that actually came to us the other day, and I, I neglected to say it, so I'll just pop that in there. Okay, so the next message that we have, this is a really nice one. It's interesting, considering we just called, um, well, you'll see. What did I name my boat? Well, the canoe that I'm using at this point. I haven't decided yet if I'm going to allow him to keep it or if I'm going to keep it. Ruby. Ruby. So they're saying your passion for someone, because Ruby Red, Red, that stands for passion. Your passion for someone that you love is being rekindled. And they're talking about you're going to find this amazing sense of wonder and joy. It's going to start coming into your life. And you're going to recognize in this beautiful relationship that this might have been a relationship that there was di difficulties and trouble. And basically what they're saying is you're going to find that the bad times are easily forgotten while the good memories hold on. You know, that, that's, the, that's the case. And that's what we want. We want to realize that... that you know, let go of the of the difficulties. Let go of the bad things. This is this is a renewal. This is a this is a um, a renewal of a relationship. This is a um, um, a renewal within a relationship. Whatever this is, this, this passion is being renewed again. So your love is being amped up again. Your feelings are they're back for this loved one, and you're going to focus on the good stuff. You're going to let the old stuff go, and you're going to recognize it's just like an, you know they talk about it being like an ocean. At times the ocean is raging and at times it's, con con it, it, it's tranquil and calm. So right at this moment, you're going to be reflecting upon your good memories um, of this person. And they're saying, do this. Allow this to happen because this is coming into your life for a reason right now. So that's awesome. Do we still have this going? Yes. Thank you, God. Okay. So the next message that we have, how do I do this? I'm going to put you guys back here again. Now you've got something else to look at, which is nice. So the next message we have, and all of these, these are either crystals or, um, you know, stones of some sort. So this is petrified wood. Can you guys see that? Petrified wood, it talks about standing the test of time. Um, it's, it's hard. It's solid. It, 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 this is wood that's not going to rot. This is wood that's going to be there forever. It's actually turned into a stone. So it talks about a magical transformation that's about to occur through an unexpected turn of events, which is awesome. And it's saying that this is the result of the strength and, commi and commitment that you've shown towards something that you really believe in. And they're saying it's, it's going to be soon time for you to accept the rewards for something that you, that you have wanted and you've long believed in, you've long trusted and, and, and spoken about and, and you've just known in your heart that this was meant to be. And they're saying it's going to be soon time to accept this award. And they're saying that it's coming about to you because of your strength and commitment and your dedication to what it is that you believed in, in your heart and in your soul, no matter what anyone else has said. Because remember the last card we talked about, how it said you're supposed to pay attention to what your heart and your soul and your, your gut and your intuition is telling you, not what other people are saying. So because you have done this, this is why this reward is coming to you. Because you have been committed, you have believed, and you have trusted that this was truly coming, this was truly meant to be, and now it is going to be. And they're saying that many who have ridiculed you or... Um, made fun of you or um, thought that you were losing your mind or didn't believe in you or didn't you know have any faith in this situation they're gonna soon start singing a different song so basically it's telling you that it's possible to stand firm in your beliefs um, this whole situation as well as remain compassionate and loving because that's that is how that this this has come about you have been 
firm in your resolve, and yet you've shown loving, compassionate, and compassionate attitude, which has allowed this um, situation to to come about and to come fully into fruition. So that's a really awesome message. The next message, and I'm going to turn us around because I don't like where we're at right now. Hold on, it's getting warm out here. I'm just thinking about that dog. You know, the dog that ran up right then. That was a message going along with, with what we got just now. Because it's talking about love and unconditional love and loyalty and friendship and that's what that dog was speaking about as he came up and, and it goes perfectly with the messages that we're speaking about right now so I love that nothing comes to us um, accidentally spirit knows exactly what they're doing so the next message that we have is, is an interesting one this this is a woo this is a stone that I, I'm not aware of uh, having seen and it's called amulet stone, or they call them thunder eggs. And basically what it's talking about with this message is that travel plans are soon on the horizon. So this is maybe one reason I'm not owning this canoe. Um, an unexpected opportunity that's going to arise, that's gonna see you preparing to travel. And they say that it's not just local, it's like a faraway place. And while you're away, you're gonna discover ways of integrating your physical and spiritual life, so, so your regular human life as well as your spiritual life are both gonna be affected, as well as your business and your personal life. So you're gonna be learning many lessons, you're gonna be experiencing many things. And they're talking about ideas and opportunities, opportunities that are going to arise because of this situation occurring. Um, clearly they're gonna be, they're going to be um, in your highest good because it wouldn't be happening otherwise. Oh, that's so bright. Um, so they're telling you also, at, at whatever this is, I don't know what it is, um, Spirit's not giving us any clues other than that it's coming. So they're saying, keep your mind and heart open for this to occur into your life. So it sounds pretty exciting. Um, okay, so the next message, we have two more, and I really hope we can make it through both of these. So this one is rutilated quartz, and rutilated quartz, I know the meaning of this one. This is, this is talking to you about telepathic communication, um, and it's telling you, that you're subconsciously receiving loving vibrations and loving thoughts from someone that's connected to your past. They're talking about an episode or a conflict that you that has hurt you emotionally is now being healed and reconciled through the power of forgiveness and, and unconditional love, which comes came up with with the, with the dog, right? Um, and you're going to find yourself also emotionally and mentally reciprocating those same feelings and the same love that you have with this same person about this past event and and through this they're talking about because of this happening at this time through this you're going to be healing what's what has occurred with the, there's emotional and mental um and spiritual healing that's taking place because of this reciprocal um energy energetic exchange remember i talked to you guys about the the healing heart um meditation and and, and the um i did that seminar where um when you energetically are, are, are sharing the, the, the feelings of, of love and unconditional love and, and, and forgiveness and, and you're, you're asking for it first from yourself and then you're going to share it with this other one. Are we on still? Yes, we are. Um, when you do this and then it comes back to you, you're healing one another. You're lifting one another vibrationally. So right now, that's what's going on. You are literally, both of you, you're thinking about them in this manner and they're thinking about you in this manner. And because of this, you're energetically healing each other lifting each other's vibration and pulling each other towards one another which is why this love for someone in your life has been um, reignited this is what's happening you've been healing one another you've been thinking about one another you've been forgiving one another you've been remembering like the other message says you've been focusing and thinking about the good times and and not and not being focusing on on the things that went wrong you know that's what we want to do in every situation think about the best like with my friend here it's over. I, I mean, I, I'm, I'm going to let it go, right? I'm going to drop it. I'm gonna, I am gonna. mean, I, it's not cool how it went down, but, you know, everything happens for a reason. And I have been able to use the dock. I have been able to use that other canoe. So I'm grateful for that, right? So I'm going to let that go. So this is what you're doing. You're forgiving, you're forgetting, you're, and you're healing one another. And because of this, any negative attachments or any... Um, Past wounds are they're being healed um, energetically, and and all these attachments are being released, and the full moon is coming up, so it's an ex excellent time for for this to happen, as well as you know when we talked about the the wild boar, 
about talking about, you know, burdensome situations in your life, you know, and if you've been holding on to a secret, if you've been holding on to a situation and not facing it, you know, the full moon's coming on the 22nd. Let it go. The full moon is when we want to release everything that no longer no longer is beneficial to our lives, whether that be negative feelings, whether that be anger, whether that be situations that are not beneficial in our life, whatever it is, whether it's holding on to secrets that we, we need to, to speak up about, whatever it is, release it. Use the power of the full moon and allow it to be released. Okay. So then we have one more message. I don't know about you guys. Look around. We've got ducks over there. The ducks speak about emotional comfort and family. Oh, that's interesting for our last message too. Um, for, for that to be the one that we're speaking about. Because the last message, it's it comes from this Jasper stone. I'm going to put you guys this way. I think this is prettier. The Jasper stone. I'm looking at the colors. You know, the pink and the white and the red. Um, all colors of, of love and passion. And it talks about that you might find yourself drawn into a situation soon that you're feeling compelled to care for and protect.